Hello, everyone. I'm Roberto Guerra. For those of you who do not know me, I am the managing partner of Singular Foods, and I also work helping companies in the plant-based vegan food sector. So, um, well, today we were, we're going to be talking with Dr. Francesca Sampolo of Italy. Hello, Francesca. Nice to see you. Hi there. She's a renowned expert in food design and the author of Food Design Thinking Methodology. And we're also here with Cynthia Fontana. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. She is the founder and creative director at AMO Food Design, and she's also a highly experienced expert in this area, which the topic is food design. So welcome, Francesca and Cynthia. Great to see you. So I will go ahead and depart, and I will let you two go ahead and take the stage and uh, have an interesting conversation on the topic of food design, on all things related to food design. So go ahead. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Francesca. <laughs> Ciao, Cinzia. How are you? It's so weird that we have to speak English and we are both Italian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even though this is life, isn't it? Exactly. Geographically located in different places, but yeah yeah exactly but this is you know it's fun it's okay <laughs> so can uh, I, I yes you go ahead no i was just thinking can i introduce you a little bit more because See? i we are reading yeah. each other's mind <laughs> yes <laughs> i have a feeling that everyone is looking at us it knows you for sure or not because maybe yes not. You, yes definitely because you are very famous and uh, definitely <laughs> everyone knows you yes and uh, well just to introduce you a little bit more for maybe who doesn't know you but i i don't trust that uh you are a food designer a designer and uh, you are a food design thinking researcher as well and uh, of course you're a consultant you're a teacher and uh, you uh, most importantly for me i'm sorry but this is for me like <laughs> you are the founder and the chair of inspiration of the uh, online school of food design which is uh, sorry but i have to say it which is amazing because i think is a, is a great place to go to have all the inspiration and all the information about food design and uh, it's really an amazing um project so i really love it and i know you love pizza that's <laughs> because we are italian <laughs> yeah i think i have some genes in me uh that uh, are probably very much italian but that make me even more so even more stereotypically Italian, and I have this just love for pizza. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't even, I don't know how to explain it really. But yeah, yeah, I do. It's like a big part of my life it's that I think about very often. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, Cinzia here, on the other hand, besides being a spectacular human being, that hopefully more, more and more of you will get you. Um, know of uh, Ooh, is a food designer herself she's born like a chemist chemist a graphic and graphic and communication designer so that was her uh, path to this discipline and uh, as we said before she's the founder founder of amo food design studio uh, look it up follow her on instagram it's amo food design isn't it yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Amo food and she, love, yeah. <laughs> um, the focus of her interest and her, and her impact is sustainability, biomaterials and food experiences and uh, this is what she brings to her collaborations with clients and partners etc and how did we meet Cinzia? I don't even know, we met virtually for the longest time already. yes, definitely through, yeah. through, through whatever the work that uh, we were doing and we connected and we did a uh, we exchanged thoughts and ideas, etc., and we met for the first time after years again only yeah. last summer at the food design um, oh, conference festival. organized yeah. festival organized by a singular food lab again. So uh, it's awesome that they bring us here together again. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. I, first time we met in person was in Madrid, <laughs> so we yeah. were 
two Italian, one from UK, one from Italy, and uh, we were in Madrid and we were talking in English, Italian, sometimes a little bit of Spain, so it was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, quite fun. So, I think I would like to ask you, uh, we have like one question for one another, which I think is the topic around which we want this conversation to revolve, but I, I think I want to ask this question to you first, because to me, your way, your answer is way more, your path, the path that your answer will give, is way more interesting than mine. So, <laughs> and also possibly it's more um, um, common. Uh, it's shared with many more people. So how did you start? How was your interest in food design? What was your path to <laughs> food design? So food design, um, well, it's, uh, I started, um, quite a long time ago, to be fair. Uh, but the interesting thing for me is that I started to work in food design when food design term was not even a word. I mean, it was not put together. So I started in uh, 2005, around 2006, and uh, I, I did one of the I would I would say pioneeristic just because there was no the word was not there when I started uh, to create something with wine and uh, the tasting and it was a um, multimedia experience so I was talking about five senses already and uh, the multimedia experience that you can try to have on uh, without having just the wine but with some other elements. Uh, including in the testing. And that was for me the starter. And it was a love at the first sight for sure. So I, I started there and I thought this is an amazing kind of field of design. Um, so I followed the path and then I, I did some uh, courses as well about food design on the secondary school in, my, in Florence. And after that, you did you taught courses or you took courses oh i'm sorry you're right i create the courses uh -huh. so i so create courses <laughs> at this time the word for design was out no i'm not really sure no. it was it was not very famous so it was um i think it was already in the air but it was not something that we were talking okay. about so um very early stages i would say So this is about 20 years ago Pretty much, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, when I when I uh, created the course uh, where I started to talk about uh, senses and food and the way you perceive the food, that was around 2009, if I remember well. So the conversation was started at that point, but it was not a huge conversation mm -hmm. about food design. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, yeah, my my... Uh, kind of way. Then uh, after that, I did a lot of other kind of uh, uh, experiences with uh, graphic and uh, communication. And I came back again with food design completely and entirely uh, because, of course, it's definitely my passion. And I, I realized that, yes, that's what I, I would like to do. So I came back with this field and I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> and then, well, after that, we met and, uh, you know, everything is. Uh, it's now, basically, nowadays. Awesome. Wonderful. And I'm going to ask you the same question because I'm very <laughs> curious to know, how did you start? Um, so my first degree is in industrial design. So this is about 20 years ago. And the first time I heard the term food design, I um, or actually read the term food design, uh, happened when I read the title of a workshop um, an elective workshop that we were um, that I chose to take to take during my uh, bachelor degree. So this workshop was called Food Design, and I was like, and I was studying industrial design in Turin. This is just, I also always want to highlight this. So we were designing washing machines and you know, <laughs> air conditioners, etc. And so we had this, uh, I chose to do this workshop, like because it had the least boring name, and you had to choose between a few. And I went in and the first day there was this chef, dressed like a chef, who came in and, and, talk, and talked to us about designing food, and he was a chef. <laughs> and so 
um, suddenly this to me made total sense that you could design with the material uh, as opposed to you know wood plastic uh, steel etc that doesn't last that disappears uh, a material that grows from the earth and you modify a little bit and then people take it into their body and all of this so that's that's how uh, I discovered the world food design and again this was about 20 years ago and that's it I mean for me it was done uh, since then every project that I could turn into uh, a food design project I did and then I my master I pursued that and my PhD I pursued that and then I ended up teaching that and so then I'm here so <laughs> it's like so linear possibly so boring and that's why no. to me, your it's story not. is more interesting because you've done a whole bunch of things and then you look back and say hey I was doing food design all along <laughs> <laughs> no, know. I know. I did chemistry as well before. I did a, a plenty of um, uh, research and development, and it was so fun. And actually, that was guiding me. I actually was leading me towards design. So that was my first passion. And then I, I went towards design. And then when I discovered design, I discovered food design. So it's uh, one piece of, after another. So it's pretty much like your kind of path is just you know mine is breaking in uh, different pieces and yours is more linear but yes <laughs> so there was one uh, let's say outcome specifically of your um create creative um abilities within food design um actually one out one creative outcome for you that um i from the from the outside looked like a pivotal moment of your career, but maybe it's really not. And that outcome is also stereotypically Italian. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to talk about how you got there and <laughs> what you have to say about that and the approach that you took to this um, common, in a way, outcome, common type of product, uh, but how you looked at it and how you transformed it, how you thought about it. <laughs> We're talking about pasta, are we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is not pizza. It has to it be is not pizza, it's pasta. Uh, yeah, so uh, it is actually, uh, it started at a precise moment of my life, and that, that's, that's true. And uh, it happened that it was during the COVID time, and uh, we all experienced that uh, situation like a couple of years ago. And uh, it was quite frustrating for all of us, I, I, I bet. And uh, for me, I was living in UK, I'm still living in UK now, uh, but at that time I wasn't able to travel in Italy. So there was uh, this huge gap between me and my family and me and my tradition and uh, uh, of course, the food as well. <laughs> so uh, what I do, I started to feel- And there was the time. We and there was time. time exactly a lot of time <laughs> because think. of course we, everything was suspended so we we were in like in a, in a huge bowl and we didn't know what was happening after so it was really a certain time of our life for all of us i think to try maybe and discover something different so what i did was i i was feeling very um frustrated about the fact that I was unable to come back to Italy for quite a long time and I missed so much my family and my tradition and what I missed the most was the fact that when I was in Italy I always had fresh pasta with my mom and uh, with my family uh, and uh, that was uh, like a tradition for me so I missed that and I started to do pasta by myself and I thought you know what it, if I cannot go to Italy, then Italy can come to me. <laughs> so I did pasta. But of course, as soon as I started to make pasta, you know, the food design kind of uh, uh, switch I had in my mind was, okay, this is nice, but we can add a little let's bit more. Take, uh, exactly. Let's take it let's to the next level. <laughs> exactly. Let's take it to the next level. So the next as level a designer was, could only, that's what a designer has to do. You know, design thinking, this is what you teach about. And you thought that to all of us. So basically, yes, I took the pasta and I thought, mm, let's put some design thinking there. And then I added colors and I added uh, shapes, of course. Uh, but of course, everything was sustainable and everything was natural and it was coming from um, very local kind of sources. And then 
then something happened and I thought, you know what, this can be like a branded pasta. So you can use the pasta to create like a, a brand product for any kind of companies. And uh, this is what I started to do. So basically, I started to create pasta that looks like a brand company. So it can be color, it can be the brand, the logo for the company. And most of the time, it was like a, a field pasta. So inside of the pasta, like ravioli. And then the project starts again to expand because if you're filling the pasta, you have to choose what you put inside. And that can be contrasting the color from the outside or maybe, you know. So you start to build all the time uh, different kind of things. And uh, sooner they come up again, another thing that basically if you have to design pasta, then you have to design the shape of the pasta that will work if you have to, uh, you know, properly uh, create a new type of pasta. And so I started to, think about the the model that you can create for the pasta and these kind of things and uh, so now I'm, I'm i'm doing exactly that so i'm creating molds to to create a new shape of pasta which is quite a, a challenge because i would just to say that i you know philip stark could try to do this a very long time ago and it was quite a disaster i'm sorry to say that but it was not the only one. And there was a couple of designer, very famous designer, they tried and the pasta was uh, uh, very nice, but it was not working properly when you cook the pasta. Mm -hmm. So pasta is very fascinating for me, just because it has got plenty of, uh, you know, uh, aspect that you have to think about when you create pasta. And uh, yeah, that was, I would say, uh, just in that time for me, uh, the, the chance to explore something that probably I, I would never explore if we were in that situation. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun. What do you think Pasa had taught you about design that you didn't know before? Definitely that you can create something with materials that you never thought about. For example, pasta. Pasta is very, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a malleable kind of product. So you can do whatever you like. That's the beauty of the pasta. It's, a, it's like a working with clay. It's exactly the same thing. You can create any shape you like. Of course, you have to think about that it has to be cooked. And when you cook the pasta, the pasta still have the same shape pretty much. This happened with the clay very often, but pasta, of course, it's, uh, it becomes more soft. So it will, it will collapse if the shape is not right. And uh, it definitely told me about the fact that you, you can work with different material that you never thought before. And uh, uh, you can create um, different projects as well and things that you never thought before as well. And uh, you can try to, to express yourself through this kind of uh, um, product, basically. And uh, it is going to be you know, fun, amazing, and uh, yeah, and plenty of people will will follow you and discover with you this journey. This is the best of of it. Love it. Do you think this was a pivotal <laughs> moment in your career? I think it was because uh, I, I started to realize again the love of uh, design. Mm. To be fair, because sometimes mm. you know, designers, uh, I don't know if it, that happened to you. Maybe it can be another question. <laughs> uh, but sometimes we have uh, time in our life as a creative person where creativity maybe goes down and then goes up. And uh, I probably had a little bit of down moment before that. And pasta helped me to, you know, rebuild the confidence in design in my mind as well. And uh, mm -hmm. in whatever you can do as a creative person, yeah. basically. I think it's, uh, well, you made, you know, business out of it, but um, for somebody to use pasta, just a means to experiment with creativity, it's yeah. brilliant, you know, it's cheap, you can eat it afterwards, you know, you can, you can have, <laughs> have the pleasure of, you know, of... Uh, consuming what you've actually designed you can uh, invite people over which is the most fun part most uh, most often so... yeah we had a lot of uh, friends coming over actually during that time when we were allowed because of course i was creating pasta and, yeah, let's come try you're inviting pasta. people every week yeah. <laughs> what am i going to do with all this pasta <laughs> yeah <laughs> So 
and can I ask you the same question? Because I think it would be very interesting to to know about what was your maybe pivot kind of uh, uh, moment in your career, in your in your design food career as well. Um, hmm. In my career in general, <laughs> or with regard to food design specifically? specifically? I would say in your, I would say in your career in general, but maybe you want to do in the food design. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hmm. See how boring well, you, and linear. No, it's not. It's not absolutely. Well, I have a feeling that when you started the school, it was quite an important yeah. moment in uh, in in your career for sure. So, that more or less was actually what I was thinking, and it's because I was thinking about it in terms of my career in general. But it's actually with regards to food design as well. There was this moment when after uh, having given myself for a few years to um, academia full-time. Uh, so after a few years of full-time uh, teaching and researching, you know, the, as a senior lecturer, as a, you know, just a traditional um, academic uh, position, um, I felt the need that I needed, I, I felt the need to uh, explore a little bit more uh, a work structure that was more ideal for me. Uh, Work, I, I mean, like in terms of creative output, in terms of, you know, realizing that I'm a human being, I can do something, I have needs of creating something. Where do I actually want to direct this? Do I want to direct this creativity within academia or somewhere else? For me, at that moment, it was somewhere else. And actually, uh, yeah, the first, um, the result, I, I, I guess, of that big shift you know, after having studied so many years, why do you bother doing a PhD if not <laughs> to work in academia? So after this, you know, big, this shift, um, the first thing that came out was this need of creating a platform, a structure, something that could allow people interested in approaching food design um with a smaller budget and lower time less time than what academia would uh, ask because there's there were there were and there are many people who want to learn more about food design and usually these are people who come either from just design or just food and they want to feel a bit more comfortable in approaching the discipline but cannot or do not want to invest the time and money that a master or a new bachelor degree uh, re requires Plus, I'm, I'm seeing that many people who approach food design today are having other careers. Uh, and suddenly, these creative beings inside of them is shouting and say, hey, let's do something, I want to have fun. And very often it is food design because for food is for many people a passion and we are all creative beings. So it's just a, 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 a connection. easy connection to do. So, yeah, so I think that creating the school, the online school of food design was uh, quite important, very uh, scary. Not at the moment. It wasn't scary. Now, looking back, I look at, at myself and I say, okay, <laughs> I did that. I really, yes, you did. I, I did that. And I, you know, uh, what's the word? I uh, risked uh, yeah. financial security. <laughs> <laughs> do that. So that was good, um, and it was and it was great. Actually, it was a great decision for sure. I I love it. I love the work in it and what it allows me to do in terms of having the possibility of bringing out my own creative output and sharing with people. And what is what the school is doing right now, so to allow other people to share their own creative output. Isn't it? <laughs> so we, we just oh, had a, is. <laughs> we just released a couple of weeks ago a, a, a course create a course creator challenge, and the the challenge the the the, all, the deadline for application expired two days ago, and Chinsia has applied. So I don't know yet who the selected <laughs> people might be, but you know maybe there will be a course about pasta. <laughs> yeah, well, you never you know. know. You, you never, never know. know. You never know. Yeah. 
you have to check on uh, online uh, <laughs> school <Google>. design. <laughs> yes. yes, definitely. That's the best place to check. But let me just say, Francesca, that I, I have a feeling that what you did with the design thinking is, uh, for me, is an amazing kind of achievement because uh, you, you took the design thinking that we usually uh, have for any kind of design approach in, in any product and in any kind of project in design we do. And you specifically managed to put this one for food. And this for me is, wow, that's impressive because of course it's different. I mean, it's the same kind of approach because it's design thinking, yes, Basically, but it's very specific. Principles. Exactly, but it's very specific and is a, it, it helps so much to understand what the next step would be to create something amazing. And uh, that's, uh, well, thank to you, Francesca, really, because this was impressive. Yeah. 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 And and it's a, it's a, I think this is a, a tool that everyone is using. And thanks to your, uh, to your school and thanks to all your thought, that's something that everyone now around food design or food area, whatever is the area they like to, to try and enjoy, they can use this kind of tools to create something they maybe would enjoy a little bit more and, and they, they will be more satisfied with the result as well. Yeah, and I think what I like about it is it's the same feeling that came from creating the school. I, want, I just wanted stuff to be accessible to people, right? And food design thinking was my answer to this need of making designing accessible to anybody. Because I'm one of the people who think that you don't need to be a designer to do design. You, know? you don't need to be a food designer, whatever it means, maybe having a piece of paper that says you have studied food design to be a food designer. And you need to have a creative process. You need to have a step by step and you look at it and say, okay, now I know what I have to do, especially for all of those people who come to food design without a design background. Right? Yeah. So that's what food design thinking does. It just gives you now do this, then do the other thing, and then do the other thing, and voila, <laughs> you design <laughs> something in the end. Easy peasy. Um, so, so can yeah. I just say, because I have a, a background in a different kind of fields, which can be, you know, communication, graphics, and uh, yeah, chemists, whatever it is, uh, the food design um, network and the food design area for me is the most democratic place I have ever been. So where people really talk about the passion and uh, the way to do things better rather than just you know showing up and do this and do that. No, it's completely different and I love this. So this is, I think about the community of uh, the food designer around the world and I think that is a, a huge achievement as well. And uh, probably it comes from whatever happened in the last 20 years where people were trying to share uh, the knowledge of this new discipline, basically. But I really love it. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's a huge part of it. True, true. I love it. It's uh, true. I think this is about all the time that we have, isn't it? I have a feeling, yes, we already finished our bet. time. We should continue somewhere else at some point. Hi, Roberto. So, hello. Good to see you again. So good. So how did it go? You were both speaking in English to each other. Seems like you had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> like a good time. Maybe yeah, you'll yeah, speak absolutely. to each other in English more often now. I <laughs> know, oh, yeah. Next fun. time we will, we will talk again in English, Francesca, even if we talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> great great so thank you so much cynthia and francesca for all your insights and uh i hope our audience enjoyed it and if you're watching later you'll enjoy it uh so thank you all and um for all of those of you who tuned in thank you and uh, stay tuned for our next open talks did, did any did you have any closing remarks uh francesca or cynthia do you have anything else you wanted to say I just want maybe to remind people that if they have questions, even when they watch this later on, uh, please absolutely feel free to connect on Instagram. I think it's the easiest thing for both of us. Um, Cinzia, you find her with Amo Food Lab. Right? Amo Thank food, you. Amo underscore Amo food, food Lab. Yeah, that's And correct. myself, you find me with, with my name. So please, please uh, share your questions and, you know, just write just to say hi. We'll... Uh, we'll, we'll be, be happy. very happy yes. <laughs> <For that as> <laughs> well. 
<laughs> because as and, we were saying, this is such a tight community and such beautiful thing that we can still, that we have, you know, um, technological means to just connect, to just, you know, shake virtual hands and just, you know, talk. Yeah. Definitely. That's that's a great thing about food design as well. <laughs> and uh, sorry, I just want to say thank you, Roberto, and uh, well, Singular Food as well, not to invite us for this talk. Yes. You're welcome and thank you. <laughs> so have a good uh, evening or wherever you are in the world. Morning, afternoon, anything. Thank, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.